so uh, we have selected some papers to present you, which we think they are of interest. They have implications for clinicians and patients in, in, in real life or current or some of them future implications. We hope they definitely all the papers have scientific value, they are of groundbreaking research and uh, the data we are showing today come from the authors, and uh, the authors of the papers which are going to be commented on, uh, they have been invited, and some of them, they are here, so you can ask your questions to the members of the ISL governing board who are going to present the data, but if uh, you wish, uh, you can also include the authors who are here to answer some of your questions. So we start... Uh, with the first, first presentation, which is by Professor Fabien Julim, who is, who is an ISL Education Counselor, and he will comment uh, about hepatitis B high, highlights and uh, how we may move towards a cure. You, you, I'm sure you, you know that the treatment of hepatitis B has dramatically improved over the last 10, 15 years, but still we cannot eradicate the virus, and this remains a problem for HPV-infected patients. So Professor Julim will show us some new efforts aiming to cure of these patients. So please, Professor Julim. Okay, thank you, George, and uh, good morning to, to everyone. Um, um, okay, so we uh, tried to, to, to give you an overview on the uh, highlights regarding hepatitis B uh, and how we, we, we see the field evolving towards um, uh, a cure. Um, so to, just to, to set the scene, um, as you know, there are, we, we have safe and uh, effective uh, antivirals for, for hepatitis B. Uh, and clinically, now, what one uh, of the major uh, concern or issue is to, to identify HBV carriers because m many of them uh, don't, don't, are not aware of the, their disease. Uh, and for those who are already identified, um, the, one of the questions is whether we, we should treat uh, chronic infections earlier uh, to have a, a significant impact on the uh, uh, prevention of the complication of the disease. So there are a uh, couple of presentations addressing the, these issues. Uh, so there's uh, a presentation on the uh, um, uh, a surveillance program for hepatitis B and C in, uh, in, in Europe, uh, which is um, coordinated by uh, the uh, uh, ECDC, the European Center for Disease uh, Prevention and Control. Um, so, um, just uh, as a summary, um, uh, ECDC uh, coordinates this uh, surveillance program for hepatitis B and C in, in 30 countries uh, of the um, European Union um, to, to uh, really improve the epidemiological understanding of acute and chronic hepatitis infections ac across Europe. Uh, this uh, program uh, has started in, in 2011, um, and uh, here they will uh, uh, present uh, uh, preliminary data, and, and more results will be published around the uh, World Hepatitis Day uh, uh, 2013. Um, so um, it's you, as you will see during the, their presentation, uh, during the parallel sessions, it, it's uh, really a, a description of, of what's going on uh, in terms of the epidemiology of hepatitis B, as well as for hepatitis C uh, across Europe. Um, and, and really, this is uh, something that is very important to, to evaluate the uh, uh, um, public health burden uh, of these chronic viral infections in, in Europe uh, and try to, uh, to implement program to, to prevent and control the transmission of, of these infections. So this is really a, a very important uh, uh, program uh, in terms of uh, public health issues. Now, um, a second study uh, uh, with respect to uh, antiviral treatment uh, is addressing the question of, of whether we should treat patients earlier uh, uh, when, uh, because currently with the uh, um, um, recommendations from uh, international uh, societies, uh, antiviral treatment is indicated when patients have progressive liver disease 
Um, um, and, and now uh, the question is, since we have uh, better drugs uh, with very low rate of resistance, uh, drugs that are very potent and achieve a high rate of vowel suppression in the, in the majority of patients uh, with a very good safety profile, the, the question is whether we should try to start early, uh, earlier the, the, the treatment so that we could have uh, a, a treatment in the intervention that would prevent the infection to, to progress to a liver disease. And one of the uh, questions is uh, if we could uh, treat patients in the immune tolerant phase uh, that is um, defined by uh, normal ALT levels, normal transaminase levels, and high vowel load, high HPV DNA levels. So there will, there's going to be one study that will be presented during the, the meeting uh, on a tenofovir uh, therapy in uh, this category of patients. So the study uh, design is, is the following. Uh, patients so with an immune tolerant profile uh, who are randomized to receive either tenofovir or a combination of tenofovir and uh, FTC, which is uh, antricitabine. Um, and here you, you, you see the, the results of, um, uh, of this study. So we, we have results now uh, after uh, four years of, of therapy. Uh, and you see the, the rate of um, um, vowel DNA suppression. And uh, you see here that there's uh, a, a good rate of suppression when patients receive tenofovir monotherapy. Um, approximately 50% of the patients achieve vowel DNA suppression. But those who receive the combination of uh, tenofovir and antricitabine uh, in a single pill uh, achieve vowel suppression in 76% in of the cases. So this is, this, and this is the first report, uh, to, to our knowledge, um, uh, showing uh, results in this uh, category of patients with immune tolerance. And now when they, they look uh, at a multivariate uh, analysis uh, uh, of treatment response, it was interesting to, to see that uh, uh, female respond uh, better than, than male, whatever uh, treatment arm, uh, and uh, patients who, who received the combination, uh, again, uh, did whether they were uh, male or, or female, re responded better than the um, monotherapy with, with tenofovir. So um, this is, uh, as I told you, a, a f really the first study uh, uh, of antiviral therapy in immune tolerant patients, um, which provide uh, uh, results uh, showing that we can achieve viral suppression. However, there's a low rate of e antigen loss and seroconversion. Uh, and we've seen that uh, gender uh, uh, and combination therapy are important factors uh, in terms of viral suppression. And uh, there was a very good safety profile during the uh, four year uh, uh, treatment period. Now, these were the, uh, uh, really the, the main uh, clinical uh, uh, findings. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, very interesting uh, studies um, assessing uh, the um, uh, identification of new targets for, for antiviral therapy. Because we, with the nucleoside analogs, we, we achieve our suppression, but we don't, don't achieve a, a cure. So the uh, Current, treatment, current treatments do not achieve HBS loss or CCC DNA loss, and, and the major question is whether we can target CCC DNA. Here's just a, a scheme to show you what, what we could do around uh, CCC DNA. Um, there's uh, one aspect which is CCC DNA dilution with, with uh, hepatocyte turnover. I, I will come back to that. Uh, another uh, approach if we cannot uh, eradicate CCC DNA, would be to silence CCC DNA. And the ultimate goal would be to destroy CCC DNA and get, get rid of it. So there are very interesting st uh, studies that will be presented uh, during the meeting uh, regarding these three aspects. Um, so the, one of these uh, study. Uh, is uh, looking at the effect of uh, hepatocyte proliferation 
on uh, the decrease of CCC DNA uh, in the liver. And, and in that study, the, the group of Maura Dandry uh, used um, um, a humanized mouse model uh, to, to, to study uh, this particular aspect. Uh, and, and what they showed is that when you would transplant human uh, hepatocytes in these uh, uh, immune deficient mice, you, you have a, um, a proliferation of the ungrafted uh, hepatocytes uh, in the re recipient mouse livers. And they, they look at the uh, um, evolution of CCC DNA uh, in, these, uh, in these animals, and uh, obviously they, they are here to, to answer questions if you, if you want after the, the presentation. Well, and what they, they showed is that um, when you have uh, uh, cell proliferation, uh, you have a, a, a rapid reduction of CCC DNA uh, uh, copies per cell, uh, as well as the uh, number of uh, uh, vowel uh, transcript in, in the uh, um, in the infected cells. However, co complete CCC DNA eradication was not achieved, as, as you could see here, in the absence of antiviral treatment, and, and maybe because de novo infection could be reestablished in the quiescent human hepatocyte. So, uh, indicating that um, hepatocyte proliferation and regeneration is important in, in this uh, uh, dilution effect, but if you want to, to be even more potent, we will need to, to add uh, an antiviral treatment. Uh, another aspect is, if we cannot get rid of CCC DNA completely, is try to silence CCC DNA. And this is uh, a presentation from uh, 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 Massimo Levrero's group, who is also here in, in, in the audience, um, looking at uh, whether small molecules can target the epigenetic control of this uh, vowel mini chromosome. And th these are uh, experiments that are uh, performed in, uh, in tissue culture, uh, in hepatocyte culture, um, and uh, uh, they, they look at the uh, um, uh, epigenetics of, the, uh, uh, of the, the vowel mini chromosome to, to look at the uh, uh, transcriptional activity uh, of this uh, particular form of, uh, of the vowel genome, and they try to, to use drugs that uh, target uh, uh, either the uh, histone acetylation or histone methylation. And just to, to uh, as a summary, just to show you some of their results, uh, you, you see that uh, with uh, drugs uh, targeting either uh, methylation or, uh, or um, uh, acetylation, uh, you can uh, really um, uh, decrease the uh, transcription uh, activity of CCC DNA uh, with these small molecules. Um, although CCC DNA is, is not eradicated. So, so that's a, a, a another proof of concept because the same group had uh, shown earlier uh, with interferon that you could do uh, a, sem a similar job, but here with, with sm small molecules with, which may have the advantage to, to in, in the future to be a little bit better tolerated, we, we hope, uh, this could be um, uh, a way to, uh, uh, to silence CCC DNA. Obviously, this will need to, to be confirmed by, by more uh, 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 experimental evaluation and then in clinical trials uh, if uh, results are still uh, promising. So the, the, the third aspect for regarding CCC DNA is whether we can destroy, get rid of CCC DNA w once it's already established. And uh, the group of uh, Ulrike Protzer uh, has studied the, the effect of the activation of lin lymphotoxin beta receptor uh, and they showed that uh, uh, this, uh, by activating this pathway, this may lead to degradation of, uh, of HBV CCC DNA from infected cells. So here's just uh, uh, showing that they, they use uh, uh, antibodies uh, that uh, agonize the, the uh, receptor of the uh, lymphotoxin beta, and which activates cell signaling. Uh, within the infected cells, uh, and the uh, results, uh, the main results are, are shown here, uh, and you see that um, by uh, uh, stimulating this, uh, this pathway, you, you can see a, a decrease uh, in the uh, um, 
amount of CCC DNA uh, in the infected cells. And what they showed is that this uh, effect is dependent on uh, apobec 3 b uh, which is known for its deaminase activity. And we can discuss later on, on more detail the, the uh, mechanism of action. And you see that when they, they uh, uh, inactivated the uh, this, uh, apobec 3 b gene, uh, you, you could lose the, uh, the effect on, on CCC DNA. So really confirming that uh, this effect was apobex 3 b dependent. So uh, I think that this is the f one of the first uh, uh, study uh, showing that we can, uh, uh, by, by activating a, a signaling cascade, you, you, we can destabilize CCC DNA and lead to degradation of CCC DNA. So this provides new hope for the developing, development of therapies uh, with a, 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 the hope to, to cure the, the infection uh, in the future. So uh, in summary for the highlights of hepatitis B, so we, there will be a very interesting study on the epidemiology of the, the chronic infections, a B and EPC. Uh, a, really a first study uh, of antiviral treatment in immune tolerant patients, um, which is a very important study. And regarding CCC DNA, uh, very uh, important um, studies of the pathobiology of, uh, of CCC DNA, which may translate in, uh, 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 in clinical development in, in the future. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>